and get it. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Sisters Interview, Wednesday, August 25th. Um, I'm Sarithkin from Ontier, and my co-host is my sister, Ashaxi, also from Ontier. And tonight we are graced with her ladyship, Jawiga. Did I, did I say that right? Close enough. No, I, I tell okay, me how okay. you like it. Uh, so I pronounce it Yadwiga. Yadwiga. Okay. Yep. So yep. her ladyship, Yadwiga, who is a scribe, a fighter, um, a service wonk. I mean, you name it, she does it. She has the coolest stuff on Redbubble that's like on tier themed and, and other things. And we'll, we'll uh, sort of pimp that later. Um, yeah. But welcome. Hi. Hello. I'm, I'm so like just beyond pleased to be here tonight. Well, we're so pleased that you said yes and that you're going to agree to talk to us because um, you do everything and I'm just really interested in talking to you about what brought you in and how you balanced your diverse interests. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So, and for my part, I've seen you from afar <laughs> for a really long time, but never been able to get over and like, so this is great to be able to yeah it, it can be difficult to like cross paths because i'm very rarely standing still so i i don't blame anybody for uh having to wait till an entire pandemic to actually get me to sit down long enough to actually have a conversation <laughs> so we usually start these with um your sda origin story so why don't you start us there yeah so um a really long time ago when i was living in idaho uh, i heard about the sca i actually went to a feast i think uh in lions march but it was that was probably 98 or so and it was kind of cool and my hometown was looking at maybe starting the sca but it just never quite happened and so it just kind of faded off into the the background for me um, but I always loved Renaissance stuff. In fact, my spouse and I had a medieval wedding. You know, one of my senior pictures is in me with me in garb that I actually wore to some of my first SCA events. Um, and so, you know, I knew that this group was around. And uh, years, years later, we moved to Bellingham, Washington, and my spouse uh, had just finished some reconstructive shoulder surgery. And he was like, I really want to go back to being um, Marshall doing something. And I was like, yeah, I'd like to do something with you. Um, and so we just happened to be at the Highland games and we hear this whack, 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 whack. We go over and here's these fighters and they're just beating the tar out of each other. And it's amazing. Cause it's, it's so real, you know, it's not staged. It's not medieval times and stuff like that, that we had seen. So we were like, well, I don't know what that is, but that's really cool. Well, months later, he had finally fully healed up from his surgery and the doctor is like, you're free to go. So we're like, Let, let's go find out this, what this SCA thing is. And, you know, we, we checked it out a little bit and we were like, okay, well, let's, let's see what it really is. And I was like, yeah, but I'm not really interested in getting into the group. So, you know, we're doing anything. I had my, my other stuff. I was like, so you just go do your fighting stuff and I'll just support you. And, you know, fortunately for us, the fight practice consisted of, uh, Sir, Thor uh, Sir Thorkel, Sir um, Ulfgar, Sir Rothgar, uh, Rainer, who's now become a knight. And yeah, I think it took about two weeks for us to go from like, yeah, we'll just kind of do this martial thing to we were officers and helping run events and we were just all in. That's awesome that you were able to find it together. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We, you know, it, and that was, I guess, the cool thing is even though I didn't start out originally as a heavy fighter, we were able to do stuff the entire time together. And that was so rare that you find a group that has that sort of support, especially when you have say an artsy fartsy person like me and a, you know, a fighter like him. And then both of us love working with people and, and, and you know, kind of being leader type people. Uh, and so it just, it fits so well. It was, it was awesome. So what, um what offices did you start off going into? Uh, the very first office I held was Harold. Um, and then after that, uh, I just bounced around a lot. I pretty much held everything that wasn't Seneschal or Exchequer. So yeah, I just wherever, you know, whatever needs, you know, I've been arts and sciences. I'm currently master of stables, so. 
And is this a barony or is this? No, we're just a shire. Uh, we are the shire that was formerly known as Shittimwood, and now we are the shire of Thornwold. Awesome. What were some of your um, interests that you crossed over into the SCA with? Um, so I grew up uh, raising horses. So when I found out that I could do horse riding, uh, that was a crossover. I've done art pretty much. I think I was drawing before I was talking. Um, so Scribal was a really, really good and easy fit for me. Um, so once I figured that out, I was so I was 100% in all the way still am. Um, so that was one. Um, through organizations that I was in with my youth, like Job's Daughters and whatnot, I had the ability to help run events and work with people. So I think that that kind of lend, you know, lend me an ability to come over and, and do some of the stuff that I like to do, like event stewarding. So you say Job's Daughter, are you Canadian? Nope, nope. No, okay. Nope, we got it down here. Uh, but yeah, you know, I was a Joby for a long time. Very cool. I had never heard of it until I, I uh, became friends with Canadians. I didn't realize it was a U.S. thing as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's super cool. I, we learned something new today. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure we'll learn more. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so what um, What was your first event? Uh, so our first event was Ursulmus. Um, that was... Uh, very first event we went to, and man, what a what an amazing first event! We had no idea what was going on. Um, Nikolai had just, you know, had been uh, authorized a little bit before then, and uh, you know, was in half loner gear and a few pieces of stuff that we convinced, you know, family to buy for Christmas, and we just were like, okay, we're gonna go do this thing, and you know, literally bought nursing us for his uh. First tournament, first event, all in one. So what did you like about Ursulmus the most? Because it's one of those events where, you know, I think if you're not a fighter, I'm not really sure I would recommend it. Oh man, for me, I loved it. Um, Ursulwuk vi Village was phenomenal. Being able to go through and watch all the craftsmen, and that's actually where I met the scribes. I had been kind of wanting to do scribal, but because I'm in a shire, we don't really have awards and 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 scrolls and charters the way you know that a, a barony or a principality would. And at that time, we weren't playing principality, so I knew scribal existed, but I didn't know how to get into it. So that was actually where I first dipped my toe in there, but also just seeing the weavers and the coin, you know, the, the, the coins and whatnot, but also even at the time as a non-fighter, being on in, in the big arena, just watching all the fighters, all the pageantry, the big banners around there, there was someone who had kind of a Turkish setup and they had drummers that were following them around and quarters and it was just I, you know, even as a non-fighter, I loved it. It just was an awesome immersive event. Cool. You and your spouse have a Polish persona. Yes, yes. How did you stumble into that? Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, Mikolai's dad was working um, with the consulate, and one of his posts was Krakow, Poland. And so we went and visited him. And this was before we were in the SCA, and fell in love with it. Amazing food, wonderful people, and then of course, you know, the winged hussars, like one of the coolest looking armored combat you know of all time i think so when we joined the sca and started thinking about personas it was really easy for us to say i want to wear wings yes i want wings and furs and yellow boots so that was pretty easy for us and and did you make your boots or did you buy them um i have not made boots yet um i'm i i am many talented but shoemaking is not one of them um so uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've bought my boots. The first set that we actually uh, had, we got from Poland. Um, and then our more, more recent ones have actually been made by Sir Kerrigan up uh, in Thierry. Very cool. I've always wondered, because your boots are really cool. <laughs> I know that's kind of a weird question to ask, but. No, you know, I can always tell when someone's looking for us because they don't do this, they do this. <laughs> I can tell, they're looking for the yellow boots. So, so did you already, did you, um, what am I trying to say? 
did you do you make your costumes and did you come into the SCA knowing how to sew or did you yeah no I had no idea how to sew coming into the SCA that was all brand new for me um so yeah it was a lot of looking at period pictures finding a simplicity pattern that was close to that and faking it you know until we got a, a good enough silhouette that you know as long as you know for us our thought was as long as it looks Polish, you know, it's never, we're not, we don't have the perfect lines. We don't have the perfectly period, you know, seams and all of that, but we just went for let's do it. So I just kind of taught myself to, to sew, had a couple friends who were willing to show me the basics of it and went from there. That's awesome. So at Ursulmus, did you hook up with um, some scribal people? And is that how you got into it and, and learned it? So I, I talked to some scribal people and I had brought some artwork that I had and I was like, look at this artwork I do. And they're like, um, yes. Um, but I still, you know, they sent me home with a couple charters and I kind of started faking it. It actually wasn't until um, uh, Ulfgar and Yahara's reign in Thierry that I, because I was friends with them, you know, and it was really cool because my friends were prince and princess and that was just such a mind-boggling thing uh, that I really started to um, do more scribal. Um, and around that time, I actually became friends with Elen, um, Her Majesty, who reached out to me once uh, out of the blue and was like, hey, I, I need help drawing this thing. Can you help me? And I was like, uh, yeah. And that's kind of those two events right there were really what started me getting into scribal. Um, and then for the next handful of reigns up in tier e, I was just on the scribal teams until all of a sudden, whoop, I'm the head scribe for this reign. And that happened. And right about that time, I was uh, forming my scriptorum uh, as I had more and more people coming to fight practice who wanted to do art or wanted to do something. And I was like, well, if you can hold a crayon, I can teach you to do scribal. And I've taken people who are like, I cannot do art. And now some of my best scribes. So, so you had the art background. Did you have the calligraphy background? Do you do, do you do both? Uh, I do bad calligraphy. Um, I, I definitely, I do bad calligraphy. I have a couple passable hands now, um, but I feel that it's very important to support people with their talents. So I have cultivated uh, a nice uh, scriptorium full of very good calligraphers. So that I just pass that on and it makes it fun too, because uh, there is very little scribal work out there that I've done by myself. Almost all of it I've involved a wordsmith um, and uh, a calligrapher, which realistically is really how it would have been done in the Middle Ages. Um, so, uh, and that was part of one of our pushes with making the scriptorum was rather than trying to make it so that I tried to teach people how to do everything. I focused on what people's strengths were and how to work together. And so now we have a script forum where I have a wordsmith who loves to research period words. She's amazing. Um, so she goes and gets period words. I have scribes who like to learn hands that are appropriate. I have um, a, a gilder. I literally have a person who one, the one job that she loves doing is putting gold on things. So I've actually just cultivated people to do stuff. So sometimes we have six people working on a scroll um, just because I can, I can pull all that talent into some stuff. So let's talk about your script, scriptorum because yeah. it's this really cool thing um, that were you responsible for putting it together? Yeah, that was, you know, at the time, uh, I, I wasn't really fighting much at the time, um, and I was really focusing um, on, you know, what, one of one of my my passions is with scribal, and you know, is a, a a goal one day is to be, you know, worthy of, you know, more advancement on that, that track. And so part of that is teaching, you know, and and part of it was also just seeing that, you know, we can always use more scribes and when people don't feel that they can do something and you have the ability to teach them how to do something, I feel that it's important to do that. You know, so I could take people whose spouses or boyfriends or girlfriends were fighting and they didn't really have anything to do. And I could, you know, I, I don't want to say put them to work because that's, that's not really what it was, but I could help them feel like they were part of this because by having them paint, even if, if all I could get teach them to do is paint basic colors inside lines, I can hand it off to another scribe who could 
shade and highlight. And eventually that person starts going, well, I want to do that. And then they start to learn more and I can cultivate on their own timeline at the pace that they're comfortable, a person developing, you know, the ability to do that art because art's not really an innate talent. It's, it's something you like anything else. It's something you train and it's something that's overall, as long as you have a will to do so, it's pretty easy to train. So the, the art part is like super cool. Um, but one of the things that I really, really admire about what you've done up there is your building of community. Um, you really um, have built a community and um, you, it, you give people purpose and belonging um, and a skill. Um, <laughs> and I just think that's amazing. And I'm, I'm just wondering, like, because people always sort of feel like they're floundering or whatever and they don't know where to start how did you start and how did you make this thing successful that's a great question um you know it really just started with learning knowing how to teach and learning how to learn you know and what i found was when i started it was just a couple tables at fight practice and i had a couple people showing up and then when people saw what was going on and you're painting pretty pictures, they show up. And so then it would be like, okay, well, I've got three people who have no idea what they're doing. All right, guys, next week, we're going to do a lesson on basic painting. And even if you're a good painter, you'll probably learn something. So I teach something. And then I'd have somebody go, well, how do you do this? And I'd be like, oh, that's a great question. And so I'd spend all week trying to figure out how do I do that? How do I teach it? And then I'd teach it. And then eventually I got to the point where some of the first students that I had that were there, when I had someone new come in, I could be working on the next level of advanced stuff and having one of them, hey, can you show them the basics? And then I could just kind of come back in. And so we all build each other up. And eventually that person who's being taught can teach the next person. And that also helps them feel like they have that place because now once, once they're teaching, they become invested, right? And even if all they're doing is teaching someone the right consistency of paint, right? And that's where I start with the very basics. Okay, use three colors and the right consistency of paint. Anyone can learn that. Anyone can teach that. And as you teach, you get better, but then you have ownership in the scriptorum. You have ownership on the scrolls we're working on. And you sort of have ownership of the people you teach too, in a way. I mean, mm -hmm. it, forms, it allows you to form a bond. Um, oh, yeah. You know, one of my, my favorite stories about this is uh, I was teaching at Collegium a class on period pigments, which is like one of my most commonly taught classes. And one of the, the people who took that class um, really took to it, you know? And then I think less than six months later, we were at um, Midhaven Harvest Feast and she approached me to say that she had taken what she'd learned from my class and applied it to do it, carving rune stones. And we ended up competing against each other in their arts and sciences competition. And she kicked my butt. Like she just like, and it was, I was so proud. And I think that's one of those things that makes the SCA so amazing is on no level was I upset that I didn't win. I didn't even really kind of realize that I hadn't won that competition. I was just so excited that what I had taught somebody allowed them to succeed so well, you know? And so we still give each other grief about it because like, what, what a hilarious thing of, you know, just, just teaching the person that, that, that wins like that. It just felt so good. That, that I think is, is the most satisfying for me uh, thing in the SCA is watching somebody that you've uh, fostered and uh, lifted up um, go and just succeed and, um, thrive. It's yeah, it's amazing. Hugely satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've never been in a sport or an organization ever where people are as excited for your wins, whatever they are, as, as you are, you know, the first time in heavy fighting that I, I got a tournament win, the guy I beat, I think he was more excited than I was, you know, like, and, and just how cool is it every week, you know, when I'm, I'm out practicing, you know, and I'm working with Sir Mikolai and Sir Ulfgar and they're teaching me a technique or a tactic. And when I can pull it off, you know, they get as excited as I do. And like, where do you see that? You know, where, where do you ever see that level of competition that is, it's intense. And then so much joy in somebody else's success. 
it's nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 insane. It's pretty special. Yeah. So let's talk about um, fighting. When when did you decide to start to take that leap, and how did that journey evolve? Yeah, you know, um, I have an amazingly I have just an amazing relationship with Sir Mikulai, um, my spouse, um, and we are we are very competitive, but not in a bad way. We always push each other to better things. You know, we we are definitely we succeed more when we're pushed by each other. And when one of us is doing something cool, the other I don't want to say jealous because that's such a kind of negative thing. But we start kind of getting a little like envious of like, well, I want to do that, too. And I loved watching him fight and I loved watching the the, the camaraderie he had there and the relationships that were forming there. And I was like, and also as somebody who, you know, likes adrenaline and likes competition, it just was kind of a natural thing to eventually um, get into. So I kind of dabbled with that for a long time, a uh, really long time for about five years. Um, and I just, I just played, you know, I had, um, pardon me, I had armor, I did war fighting, I did a little bit of tournaments, but I never took it really seriously. Um, I, I went over and I did rapier for a while because I just, I like dabbling in everything and, and touching everything and it was fun, but rapier didn't quite scratch the itch that, and I kept coming back to heavy. And then, um, you know, I just had the really, really good fortune of um, crossing paths um, and becoming friends with Sir Einar. And that really developed into a, a really deep, beautiful friendship and also really created where my passion for heavy fighting came into um was having somebody that that night squire relationship which just changed everything you know and forced me to start looking at it seriously but then seeing what comes from the relationship between a knight and squire has continued to push me further and further and for are you a melee fighter, a tournament fighter, or both? Uh, mostly tourney. Mostly tourney. Um, usually for war, like I'll, I'll war fight for funsies because my gosh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and you know, uh, I've had some hilarious, you know, like some hilarious success on the war field with like you know the the infamous what's a Gernon incident. But mostly, yeah, mostly it's tournament fighting. Well, you're going to have to tell us about the what's a Gernon incident because yes um so i actually avoided war fighting for a long time because it seemed really intense and scary and painful and you know i'm not a very large fighter so i was like i don't really want to do this and i wasn't doing any combat archery so i finally got convinced to go do autumn war and so here i am at my first my first war and i terrified and excited but here's sir Mikolai and here's the orphans out of aquaterra and i've got a little tiny war group and they're going to take care of me and we go out to the first uh scenario i walk out and immediately get shot in the face by an archer and i'm dead and it's a warm-up scenario so it's like oh i'm like oh, okay well war fighting's not that bad i got this okay cool all right well needless to say our side gets completely destroyed and steer cars king and he comes out between the armies and he says that he's got a knight that's so good and so wonderful that no one can lay stick on this knight. No man can kill this knight. And, and he thinks he's gonna put a bounty on this knight. And at this point in time, Gernon's kind of doing this. And everyone's like, oh, really? And so Steercar says, all right, well, whoever kills Gernon in the next scenario gets a six pack of beer. And so everybody gets really excited. Well, I don't hear any of this. I'm way in the back nosebleed section. But our commander, Mikolai, he comes back. He's like, all right, guys, here's our thing. We got to go kill Gernon. And I'm like, what's a Gernon? Is this, is this a war move? Is this a like a war point? Like, I don't know who this, like, because they're not saying Sir Gernon. They're just saying Gernon. So we get out on the battlefield and we're starting to do kind of like some flank cleanup stuff. And all of a sudden, I just hear Gernon, Gernon, Gernon. And my, my little group starts running. And so I'm running after them. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but I guess we're gonna go here. And we kind of like, the battlefield clears out a little bit. And here's this guy and he's all like shiny silver and blue and white and he's got a pike and he's just murdering everybody. Just tink, tink, tink. And I'm like, oh no, uh-uh, that might be, I don't know, that's probably what a Gernon is. And our group finally gets up there and they're, they're fighting him and he's just, killing our guys left and right. And then he gets into a pike duel with Mikolai. And I'm just like, I gotta save my hubby. 
I'm like, my, my mind goes blank because I'm just watching in slow-mo that Dusty's beer, Mikolai's blocking and blocking. And then I see the shot come in and it rocks Dusty back. But at this point in time, I've taken my boar spear and I've gone over my back like this. And I run up and go, ah, ah! and I whack him right in the face. And he just stops and he looks at me and he falls over. And then people start freaking out. And I'm like, okay okay and you know the war scenario finishes up and steer cars walking around who killed you know who killed girl Gern and you know Mikolai's like you got to go tell the king and I'm so still so new I'm like I don't want to talk to the king kings are scary you know and they're like take off your helmet my like, hands are shaking I can't even get my helmet off I'm just like so nervous so the king you know is is very kind and says you know thank you you'll get you know a beer later and um, you know, it, it was funny because the next scenario, which kind of ties into this real quick, is we're attacking Gurnan's side, and they're like, we need a herald. Someone go, where the Vikings go, yell Viking stuff at them, how we're going to kill them. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'll go. I'm a herald, I'll go right up there. So I go up there, and I'm like, Norsey, Norsey, ravens feeding on corpses, your McGunder chewing on your ankles, Norsey, Norsey, Norsey. You know, and I'm just, you know, doing this, and they're like, herald. What is your name? And I am like, I am Yadviga. And I look, and there's Gurnan and his seashells, the slayer of seashells. And I bow and I run away. Well, apparently, Gurnan turns to his army and is like, You kill the Norse dogs, but that Herald, no one touches the Herald. She's mine. And let me tell you what, they listened, but he never saw me the rest of that day. I had the best war fighting experience ever no one touched me i was killing people i'll tell you man all war should be that good <laughs> i love gurn stories they're the best they are they really just are that's hilarious what a great day what a what a um what a fantastic day. introduction to war fighting very cool super cool <clears throat> so um You've talked a little bit about your night. Do yeah. you have uh, mentors in the, the other aspects of your SCA endeavors? Yeah, yeah. Um, so like I said, Sir Einar is uh, my knight. Um, Sir Ulfgar, I am in fealty to him as a protege. Uh, he's my pelican. Um, and I am an apprentice to uh, Master Guido um, up in Lionsgate for, uh, he's my laurel. Awesome. So yeah. So you hooking up with Alfgar makes sense. You guys live together. How did you um, hook up with the other two? Like how, how were those introductions made and how did you decide that those were the people? Yeah, you know, um, I, I got to know Master Guido first through Rapier. Um, and we just, we had a, you know, we really clicked personality wise. You know, I wanted somebody who could be very honest with me and work with me. Um, and just, you know, tell me like it is to help me. I am, I'm a very goal oriented person. I'm a very, I'm very driven. So I need people who can work with that drive, you know, people who can help me, let me know where I'm dropping the ball. Let me know where I'm succeeding. Um, and it's really important to me to have somebody who can work with a strong willed person like myself. Um, so we just clicked really well. Um, of course at the time the border was open. So it was very easy to go, you know, I'm 20 minutes across the, you know, from the border. So going up every week to Lionsgate for fight practice um, or scribal worked really well. Um, so, you know, so that's, you know, that's how that went. Um, you know, yeah, Ulfgar, Ulfgar is very easy. You know, that was a, um, you know, he's local. We get along very well on those, uh, those lines. You know, I really believe what he's about he saw something in me. So, you know, we're, we're working um, there. Um, Einar was an interesting one. Actually, we negotiated this um, actually at my 10th anniversary. Um, my spouse and I were down in Portland on a beer garbage um, and we had sent out a call to any SCAers who wanted to come join us at one of the pubs. And uh, Sir Einar was one of the people that showed up there, uh, and he was less impressed with the fancy food at the place we were at, so he took us on a whirlwind tour of the Portland brewery scene, and, you know, as we talked, you know, he just, 
you know, he asked, you know, why I wasn't taking fighting serious, you know, like I clearly loved it and I clearly, you know, wasn't the worst person to pick up a stick. So, you know, why, you know, why wasn't that something that I was working on, you know, and I was like, well, I wanted, you know, I, I wanted to, but locally, you know, the, the nights that were here in Thornwold weren't quite good fits for me. You know, I love them, but especially in something like heavy fighting, which is very hard, um, you know, as, as terrific as you know, it's, it's very difficult, um, especially when you're on a path. And I think that there's some, some very specific challenges that, you know, female bodied people have to go through. And I needed what I knew what I needed, even if I couldn't quite figure it out. And I knew that while the Knights locally were wonderful people, that they weren't going to be quite up to what I needed. But in talking to Einar, I had somebody who really listened um, and was willing to work with me. You know, not to say that the, the, the fighters here wouldn't, but I also needed that kind of iron spine. I needed somebody who, when I tried to get lazy or when I tried to have BS, who'd have the ability to say, hey, I love you, but don't. You know, and that was something I needed because I have a strong personality. And when things get tough, I will push back. And I needed somebody who would be able to push me. And the more we talked, it just became very apparent that this was a potentially very good fit. Um, and it ended up being an amazing fit. You know, we worked really well together. That's excellent. Um. Very cool. I have pictures. Should we take a look at pictures? Yeah, let's take a look at pictures. That'll be fun. <clears throat> can we see that? All right. I can see it. I can see it. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So These are babies. Oh, we are. We're baby babies. Yeah, this is, I think, uh, this is either our third event or within, I think, our first year. Um, so, uh, yeah, this was, uh, we still didn't have any garb really related to our personas. Um, the dress uh, was made by one of my dearest friends, Ursula, um, you know, and we were just faking it till we make it. But it was, gosh, what a, what a fun time. So. So somebody asked which Einar, and I know, but why oh. don't you let them know? Yeah, so uh, my Einar is the Southern Einar, the uh, previous Earl Marshal, uh, Einar Knutsen. Uh, the angry redhead um, with the heart of gold, that's my guy. Um, he's like a hard softy. He's a hard softy. He, 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 is, he is one of the kindest, most like genuine people I've ever met, you know? And, you know, I know, you know, some people say, you know, he's, he's, he's mean or he's a jerk or whatever, but really I don't see it. You know, I, I know that he can be hard sometimes, but it really, it really comes from places of love and caring and, you know, the SCA is our family and, you know, so yeah, Southern Einar, he's my guy. Um, so this is, um, I think this is an, a Midhaven Harvest Fest. Uh, I believe. And uh, this is one of my scribal displays showing uh, period tools and a period setup uh, with all the, the good funds and bits, um, including uh, a queen. So, you know, it's a really good accessory to add to your uh, setup. Tell me about the, the easel thing. Is that something you made? What is that? Um, so I didn't make any of these ones. Um, I found them from artisans who made them. But yeah, these are uh, late, more late period setups. So this is going to be a 14th or 15th century setup. Um, my, my whole kit and scriptorium is kind of based off of a 15th century Flemish scriptorium. Um, so this would be what a scribe would have um, for that setup. So the top one uh, actually shows the... Uh, manuscript that you would be, in this case, copying from. Um, and sometimes uh, you'll have a second book that will either be techniques or if it's include something from this. So that would be the piece that's on the right there. Um, and then the slant in the front is actually the working slant that the scribe would be working off of. I just, I love the tools. It's just, um, what a way to like really transport the experience. 
It's been a lot of fun. Um, I've I have made or commissioned all the period tools. Uh, I'm really blessed to have um, uh, Hieronymus, who's a knife maker here in Thornwold, who's worked with me on a couple different period uh, scribal knives. Um, and I've made my own paintbrushes. Uh, I think the only thing I haven't made yet yet is the vellum itself. Tell me about your rat friends. Uh, you know, I got plague rats and it was really funny at the time, but now it's not so funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That didn't age well. <laughs> that did not age well at all. <laughs> Oh man. Um, I think this is Athenaeum. Um, and uh, um, being able to show a body of work, which I have to say is really, really hard to do as a scribe to show your body of work, because really what this involved was me sending out a message to literally anybody who has a scroll made by me, would you please let me borrow it? Um, and having people bring their scrolls from all over kingdom. Um, so it's very, very tough to bring a body of work as a scribe, but I managed to, this is like one of the only times I've actually managed to get a really good sampling of a body of work. Awesome. Do you have, um, well, I know the answer to this because I looked for one today. Um, do you have a, uh, photo album of all of your work put together on your Facebook? Kind of. Uh, I, I did not start taking pictures of my stuff uh, until more recently. Um, so what I have more is photos of process and I have lots of photos of stuff that I've taught people to do, but I've been very bad at collecting, making sure I have something of everything I've done. Um, but you can find a lot of that um, actually on my persona's uh, Facebook page. I try to keep that updated with a lot of the things that I do and the stuff in progress. So right now I've been doing a lot of shield painting. So I try to keep uh photos up there for people to see what i do and i got no photos from that page because i didn't know it existed so that's okay that's okay that just means it's a surprise for people who go hunting it down <laughs> well, well for, for not knowing that page existed you got an amazing spread of stuff so well done oh so in aside i just have to say that you have the most amazing smile oh thank you thank you you're welcome uh, so this was the last Ursulmus. Um, so this was my uh, first Ursulmus fighting as a squire. I got to talk to some lady knights and I was just, what an amazing day. Like this was just, that that smile there is because gosh, I was just, I was so happy. Like I, I got a I got to hang out with my my knight as squire. Well, actually I was still a man at arms at this point in time. No, a squire this way. Yeah, a squire. I was just Oh, this was a great day. Is this 2020? Yeah. Yep. Yep. There's a really good contingent of female fighters at that at Ursinus. There was, and I'm so glad we got that picture of everybody. It was what a what a cool, cool day. That that picture is coming up soon. So nice. Can I ask sort of a female fighter pointed question? How, like, a lot of people have issues um, training and fighting with their um, male spouses or male partners or whatever. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience with that and how you deal with it? Yeah, you know, um, it's it's always an interesting thing, right, when, when you're working with your spouse. Um, you know, one of the things that we always talk about is that it's while we are competitive people, our competition isn't really against each other. It's against our bigger goal. So it's always about us pushing each other and helping ourselves improve towards that goal. Um, so one of the things that we do um, because, and, and, and it's a really challenging thing because there's a significant skill disparity between um, Mikolai and myself. So one of the things that we do is we're very good at um, talking about what we're about to do, you know? So before we fight, it's like, okay, hey, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna frustrate you. I'm gonna give you a set of fights that are all about where your gaps are, right? So I go into a fight knowing it's gonna be frustrating. That doesn't make it any less frustrating, but I know that it's not that he's being a jerk for a jerk's sake, right? And then we stop and we talk about it. And, you know, he always makes sure to tell me 
the good things that we did, you know, like, wait, well, okay, so this is the stuff we got to work on, but he always makes sure to let me know what the good stuff is, you know? Um, so that's one of the ways that we work is just really good communication. And then if something's getting a little hard or like, Hey, you know, this is just kind of getting to me. I'm really struggling with that. We don't push things, you know, um, if, if it's starting to become, you know, too frustrating or whatnot. And that's, you know, and, and part of that also is the help of by having a really good night, who's good friends with both of us, we, the three of us can really work together on those goals. And we kind of have an intermediary in there if things get challenging. Very cool. So did you fight both days at that Earl Smith? Did you do the bear meat tourney? I sadly did not do the bear meat tourney. I had to work the next day, which I was so disappointed about. So this is the, all the ladies. Well, I, I would like to say it's all the, the um, gender minorities because there's a couple of people in there that um, are non-binary. Sorry. It's okay, you didn't know. I, I did know and I know better and I apologize. Um, uh, let's see, that is Collegium. Uh, that is a, uh, a minor bookmaking class that I taught to how to make a quick and easy scribal book for yourself to jot down notes and get ideas with. So I just love teaching, you know, one of my one of my absolute loves in, in the society and in real life is I love teaching people. Um, so any opportunity I have to get a bunch of group people together and teach them how to do something, I'm gonna take. That is a jam packed class too. Mm -hmm. What is a scribal book? Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's, Kind of, kind of like your fighting book, you know, it's something to take notes in. Um, one of the things that I like to do with mine is, uh, this is one of my bigger ones, but one of the things that I like to do is, oh, there you go, uh, when I find cool patterns, I make a note of them um, and I write them down. So I have, I can look at them later, you know, and I write down underneath like 13th century, 14th century. So when I'm working on a scroll or a charter, I can add some, you know, um, add bits and pieces to it. And then if I know what time or place that art came from, I can add appropriate embellishments. I love that. It's like a, um, a very organized portable Pinterest board. I was just about to say it's a portable Pinterest. Um, and, the, and then literally that class I was teaching was how to make a portable Pinterest. I actually had pre-printed -print pages that were like, go find borders, go find diapering, go cut out cool, you know, pieces of, you know, go print off cool pieces of manuscripts and put them into your uh, portable Pinterest. I think I'm going to have to rename that class into making a medieval Pinterest. Thank you. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. That looks like maybe a crown. Uh, that was, yeah, I think that was a crown. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm coming. I'm going back to that. Oh my God. I'm flipping pictures. I'm so sorry. There we go. <laughs> I'm yeah, going. yeah, I think that that's a that's a crown. That might be a squires tournament, I think. Cool. That was our shire uh, walked in um, our city's pride parade. Um, so I have a rainbow dress and Sir Mikolai is rocking uh, rainbow feathered uh, hussar wings. Those are amazing. Yeah, so we had we had a really fun time with that one, um, and we were just you know we really we really pushed with the Middle Ages as it should have been. So we had a lot of success there. People loved us being out there. Uh, did you guys do the the uh, the rainbow feathers yourselves? How did that work? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, those are um, uh, made with two pieces of PVC pipe that were uh, heated up and bent. And then I bought rainbow feathers and I just hot glued them in because, you know, obviously I can't make that one historically accurate. So we just made them something that would stand up to dancing around in a, uh, um, a parade. Fantastic. Yeah, so uh, this was an Athenaeum, and I actually went a different route uh, at this Athenaeum. I think that 
there is maybe one, two pieces of my own artwork in here. Um, that year for Athenaeum, rather than being my body of work, I actually asked all my scribes from my scriptorum to either paint something based off of what they learned or get photocopies or originals of the stuff they worked on. And I had them all write um, about a page about learning in the scriptorum, what I had taught them, how, how they had become better artists. So I actually did my Athenaeum presentation on what I was able to do with other people. Very inventive. That's a great way to kind of show a tangible um, result of your teaching. I love that. Yeah, it, it's a challenging thing when one of your big focuses is uh, like the idea of a scriptorum is yes, I'm a scribe, but my other focus there is creating the scriptorum and running the scriptorum. So I had to figure out how do I, how do you show a scriptorum, right, without packing all your people there. So this is what I came up with. Yep, this is a squire squad. So uh, the two in gray are two of Nikolai's squires. Um, and when our knights can't or aren't able to go to events, we will load up and uh, go be squire squad. <laughs> and did you do these shirts? Yeah, yeah, I made those shirts. Do you wanna talk a little bit about um, the, uh, shirts and, and swag and stuff that you make? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a little store on Redbubble. Um, and uh, you can find me on Redbubble if you just like Google Redbubble and then Yodibeth, Y-O-T-E-B-E-T-H. And you'll find a store and it's just got a lot of on tier and SCA themed swag. Um, one of the things that I found is that we just don't have a lot of, you know, we don't have a lot of SCA merchandise. And so I, being a graphic designer in real life, decided I'd just start making some fun stuff um, and making it, you know, try to make it as accessible to people as possible by just putting it on one of the web, you know, the online web stores so people could get buttons and stickers. And it's been a lot of fun because I've gotten, you know, people have asked me to make stuff like hey, can you make uh, my Baronials populist badge, but with a rainbow, you know, being able to do some stuff like that for people to have their specific, you know, their their support for who they are and, and in their chosen game. So it's been really fun to be able to do that. Rifkin, do you have a couple pieces that you can? Well, I have one sitting next to me. This is gonna be my new fighter journal. I love it. This is one of um, Yadwiga's designs and then I also have um a couple of uh, I have a sweatshirt and a t-shirt that I wear all the time for working out in and that um where the wild things are your that yep. one is one of my absolute favorites that you've done yeah I that was a weird fit of inspiration that kept me up way too late until that one was done so that was a fun one to do yeah and, and I I just put the link to um your well where the wild things are one red bubble in the comments yay. for people fantastic it's just, um, I, it's such a great thing that you do for the kingdom with that. I know that um, it's just sort of your a creative outlet for you, but it's just such a um, great way to give people a fun way to represent and to um, belong, I guess, in a way um, without like something super fancy or just like a sticker on your car. Yeah. Um, so I super appreciate that you do that. I love fun stuff like that. Um, so I, I'll buy all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it is an absolute joy. It's so fun to make. I love, I love being able to wear stuff, you know, uh, about things that I like, you know, and things that I support. So it's so nice having that, you know, and the ability to do that, you know, and one of the things I like to do is, you know, um, a portion of all the stuff I, I sell, I, I, I keep a small portion of it and it's a donation to the kingdom's travel fund, you know, because I think that it's, you know, if, if you're going to make something like this, it's good to share, you know, and it's not much, but every little bit helps. That's very cool. So this looks like a crown processional. Yep. Yep. That would be a crown processional. You usually can tell, um, Nikolai will be wearing either the wolf or the wings or both. So that's usually how I can tell it's a crown processional. 
the fancy stuff comes out. The fancy stuff. So yep. are you going to fight crowns? And if so, are you boys going to fight for each other? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, we've done that in the past. Um, I've fought in a couple crowns. Um, but yeah, absolutely. We'll be fighting for each other um, with with a more, at least on my end, a more serious face now. So that's, I'm really looking forward to. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a picture of my scriptorum. Uh, we made a banner um, with our little scriptorum beastie. And um, so, yeah, just kind of showing how we get everyone together and we all work together. And, you know, yes, a person could create a thing, but it's way more fun when everybody does it. The, the smiles in that picture say everything. Yeah. Um, this is a, uh, this is Andromaca and Sir Gavin's uh, torses. Uh, so uh, a group effort, I think on this one, it was mostly just art direction. Um, Sir Mor Morgan of Absorithwith Abzor Abzor on one side, he, uh, he did the art. Um, and then Valka, Siga's daughter on the other side, she did the painting. Um, and then I'm gonna guess here that the words were by Ursula and the calligraphy by Ursula and or uh, Isabel. So I mostly just kind of helped keep the project uh, rolling, but it is definitely indicative of that, that group effort that we all put in together. Nice. It's just beautiful work. Really, truly. Yeah. Sometimes the scribes get a little crazy. Uh, this was, oh gosh, somewhere up in the hinterlands of uh, Canada, teaching a scriptorum class. Um, and so I was, uh, I was teaching how to do diapering and some of the effects and how you can do uh, diapering. And I decided I looked a little bit crazy. So we decided to make a meme out of it. <laughs> Um, top hats are a period for me and Michaelis persona. Um, and so Sir uh, Edward had um, gifted us with a pair of top hats. So we decided to wear them into a crown procession. Fun, super fun. And I'm flipping again, sorry. Oh, yep. So this was a, um, a fight against me and Sir Gernon um, deciding to rehash some of the uh what's a gurn in this um and uh he was i believe it was he was the only person surviving on his side so we were fighting him one-on-one -on -one and i i asked for the boon to challenge him first uh so that we could continue our epic battle against each other Sadly, he won that one. So I guess we're gonna have to go for a third one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is a close up of some of the work I've done. Um, so uh, that is in the very front there, that's Kiara's laurel scroll. Um, to the left side there, that is Sir Morgan's um, Sable Scrivener. Um, and I see there's a, on the far side, that's Vlad's Pelican Scroll. And then above it's the teeny tiny, um, that's Kenrick's teeny tiny Pelican Scroll up above it. And that was done on site, right? That one was done on site, yeah. Um, when um, Christian put uh, Ken, Sir Kenrick on um, a vigil, he, Kenrick said, I'd like to be elevated that day. And so I um, was like, okay, uh, I, I was Royal Scribe at the time. So I was like, your majesty, may I please make the scroll right now? Um, and thankfully he said, yes. And I sat down at, at a, I think it was a crown or a coronet, it was crown. And I sat down and knocked out and gold. Luckily I had all my scribal supplies and my gold leafing supplies with me because I don't know, I'm weird and I carry gold leaf to events uh, and was able to knock out a tiny pelican scroll right then and there. Um, that is Sir Nikolai's um, knighting scroll. Um, probably one of the tougher ones I've ever done when they reached out to me to say that he wanted his to be like a tapestry 
And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like that's, that's a hard, hard thing to, to paint. Um, and every single thing, you know, and, and being this kind of scroll, every sort of item on there has, you know, there, there's not a, a flower or an animal or anything that doesn't have meaning, you know, so having to figure out how to incorporate all of these things. Do you, do you know him really well, or did you get a list of things to incorporate? How did that? Um, yeah, he's, uh, him and his whole household, the Iron Ring are friends of ours. So, you know, it's, it was one of those things when, when Nikolai got put on vigil that I was definitely like, please, I want to work on the scroll, um, which was funny because I was like running to them to be like, let me work on the scroll. And they were running towards me, please work on the scroll. So it worked out really well. Um, so I knew him pretty well. So I knew for the most part what the references were that they were asking for. So it made it a little easier. Well, it's, it's amazingly cool. It, it, and it makes such a big difference to have a scroll that that is so meaningful like that to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the idiotiest babies. This is 2007. This is uh, me and Nikolai tying the knot quite literally. So we were into the medieval stuff before we even got into the SCA. So I think it was just kind of faded for us. I think that's so awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's me marshalling. Uh, I think that this is an ed Eddie's. This is an Eddie's. So that's me marshalling at an Eddie's. Armor check. Doing what a marshals do. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So when I war fight, sometimes I do combat archery. Um, I'm a little weird in that I only take 12 uh, arrows to the field when I do combat archery and then I have my gauntlets and my pike on the side. So I will do, I'll shoot 12 arrows and then I go and pike the rest of the time. I love this site down by the water like that. It's super cool. It's yeah, it's really fun because that's actually my hometown. So it's always fun to go back home and do a, uh, um, yeah, uh, this is a, this is one of my favorite scrolls I ever did. Um, that is our scriptorum, uh, get, becoming an armidurus group, um, which is really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so each of the each of the critters has meaning to the group, um, and there's an inappropriate critter underneath the smiley face. So I was you know, wondering. Yeah, there, there, there's a critter that has a lot of meaning to me um, and, you know, that I love, but maybe not everybody wants to see. So that one's under a, uh, you know, um, under a smiley face. I just thought this was cool. Yeah, yeah. When they were doing the Ontario Magic cards, that was, uh, that was mine. Um, and actually that picture came from, uh, that is actually, I think that's the same court that I did. Yeah, that's the same event that I did the tiny pelican scroll. I don't have a magic card. So I well, think maybe we'll have to remedy that. Yeah, we'll have to fix that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There's the teeniest, tiniest pelican scroll. It's, it's just so amazing that you did that on site. Yeah, I love that one. It's probably, probably one of my other favoriteest ones. So shiny. Yep, doing scribal on site at, uh, this was at Honey War. And you were royal scribe for them, is that right? Yeah, I was royal scribe their first reign. Um... So yeah, this was, and this was my very first event with them as their royal scribe. Um, so I was talking about how you can come be a scribe and help us out and how much we appreciate you. That was a fun event. How was it being royal scribe for someone who is uh, an incredible scribe themselves? Um, you know, it was, it was an interesting time, um, you know, because I had never been a royal scribe before and it was their first reign. So I think that there was a lot of learning going on, um, but you know, on on some hands, it made it really easy to shorthand things because we could 
understand what, you know, I could understand what they wanted pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, so that aspect made it a little bit easier. Awesome. Yeah, there's the wings. I made those. Nice. Wow. Yep, and that's that's our full when we do our full Polish garb. That's our our full po Polish court garb. So, do you have your own wings? Uh, I have a very a single uh, set of wings that would have be, been used actually as a equestrian. Um, so, but I don't have a beautiful set like that. Um, this picture is great because this was at the crown that Steercar had everybody have to have registered heraldry. And so a handful of us scribes were there. This is like, as people are signing up for crown, we're making sure that every, because Steercar has said everybody has to have registered heraldry, we decided that would be the crown also, that there would be no, no fuzzy bunnies, no sparkle ponies, that, <laughs> that list that list board every single person also had a painted piece of heraldry so we were sitting there up until like i was literally there until like the line started moving uh, we were making um uh the, the list shields for people so i was drawing them isabel in the blue there was painting everything i drew um mario was painting and drawing as well and we knocked him out we managed to succeed with it how many uh, shield tiles did you guys end up doing? I don't even want to think about that. It was <laughs> it was so many. It was so many. I mean, day of, I think we probably did 20. Um, but we had organized a Facebook group ahead of time. And so we were organizing people to work on them. So, you know, we had a bunch that were done ahead of time, but these were the ones that were done on site. Amazing. Yeah, it, it, it was so much fun, though. Did you guys donate the tiles? or did people buy them? Yeah, um, you know, it was it was a combination. Um, I I cut out some tiles and then, you know, I, I just asked for a donation of a couple bucks. But once we got on site, I just brought them and we just did them. That is um, quite generous of you. Yeah, this picture's fun. This was actually down at Gulf Wars. Um, and I got to, through Sir Thorkel, I actually got to uh, meet someone and borrow their pony, and I actually got a ride for on tier uh, at Gulf Wars. Wow. So tell me about Gulf Wars. Everybody uh, loves it. Did you love it? I loved it so much. Um, it, it is such a fun event. Like it is just, it, it's Disneyland um, because <laughs> there's, you know, because there's these permanent encampments and there's buildings and you know, we are, you know, I love on tier, but we're kind of a barbarian kingdom sometimes compared to some of the people, you know, and where for them, you know, banners and things like that are, are all part of it all the time, you know, so just the pageantry is everywhere, but just also having that many SCAers around, you know, and that much fighting and that much arts and, and such a huge, like huge merchants row and, and, and then just, just good attitudes and good people the whole time, just so much fun. Very cool. This is you working on a scroll? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're gonna find a lot of pictures. That's me at any event, probably. If I'm not running around, I'm sequestered somewhere doing scrolls. Uh, this is doing uh, crest combat for equestrian. Um, you know, there's there's a great picture. That's me and Sir Thorkel uh, doing crest combat against each other. Um, one, one of the best nights of on, on tier, you know, we miss him horribly, horribly, but what, what an amazing person. And we, he and I, we were so wonderfully competitive at each other. And anytime we got horses, we liked to ride against each other. We'd get, you know, crest combat, armored combat. We were, we were always at it, at each other. It was amazing. Wow. So is the, is the goal here to knock your crests off each other? Yep. Yep, this one it's it's kind of uh, more of a light combat, so you don't have to be armored. Um, the sticks actually are not rattan; they're padded, so you can't really hurt each other, um, which is why the horses don't have to have armor either. So, because you're only aiming at each other, very top of each other's heads. Uh, yeah, equestrian games. So, just practicing down in Midhaven. 
So yeah, I love riding horses. I, I miss owning horses. Um, this was uh, set up at Thierry Arts and Sciences, um, and it was a comp. And um, this was a showing all the steps that created an illuminated letter. Um, so, all the everything from the sketch to the gilding to um, the underpainting, the highlights, and the finished piece. So this was kind of a fun, and, and one of my first uh, arts and sciences competition displays too. So. Like I said, I love to dabble. I love to do a little bit of everything. You know, if I'm not if I'm not doing scribal or heavy, I can rapier fight, do archery. You know, I just I love it. I, I think that's one of the things about the SCA that is so much fun is that there's so much to do and, and it's OK to dabble. You know, it's OK to, to do stuff, you know, um, you know, I haven't maybe progressed so far in any one thing because I've, I've done a little bit of everything, but I just love it. How do you balance it all? I mean, I, I think that's one thing um, a lot of people really struggle with. It's one of the reasons why I don't do anything else, Marshall. Um. You know, I think on some level, it's when it's easier to balance when you, this is going to sound really weird, but when you don't have one of the higher goals, you know, when I wasn't you know, trying really, you know, really hard seeking a peerage, right? You know, and I know this, this is, it's a poor phrase, but, you know, it wasn't about, well, I'm doing the, you know, like, okay, I'm going to focus everything trying to be a laurel. I'm going to try to focus everything trying to be a knight. At the time, I was just dabbling, you know, so the balance just kind of comes to what's the coolest thing at that event, I'm going to do that, you know, and you have to accept the fact you can't be everywhere all the time. So yes, if, if you're a dabbler, um, which especially at the time I was, you know, there's probably a fight practice going on at this event, but I decided to compete or yes, there are some cool arts and sciences classes, but I really want to go do that Squires tournament. So you just have to make your decision. It's harder to dabble when you've got, you know, when you're pushing towards a goal, you know, it's, it would be very difficult, you know, in, in heavy fighting. If I get to a point where I'm, I'm pushing hard, you know, for a goal, then yeah, I'll probably step back from some of the other stuff a bit because you really have to have that focus, you know, and that's just the nature of the beast. Um, but when I, when there's not a strong goal one way or the other, it's easier to dabble. Heralding. Heralding, yep, dabble again, dabbling, you know, especially at something where um, I think there was some reason, let's see, uh, I think this is Sport of Kings. Yeah. Yeah. So I was helping out on one of the big tournaments that I wasn't in. So, hey, if I can't fight, I may, the best, one of the best seats for fighting is being a marshal. So. I'm glad getting knighted. Yeah. That was a fun day. That was a great day. And I, don't know why I only pulled that picture. There were some really good pictures of you, and I only pulled that one. So. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. I mean, SCA is really a him and I thing, anyways. So you know, it's 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 hard to talk about my journey without talking about his. It'd be hard to talk about his journey without talking about me. You know, so it it, it works for me. And, and there's something special about becoming. Well, A, watching your, your spouse become a peer is um, a wonderful experience. And, and then becoming the spouse of a peer. Yeah. Um, it changes things. It does. Oh, it, it definitely, you know, and that was, you know, we talked about it a lot when he started getting serious about fighting was a time when I was getting really serious about the arts, you know, and it was, we had to make a decision, you know, we couldn't equally push, I don't want to say push for a peerage, but you know, but we couldn't equally focus on that, you know, and we, we had to make a decision, you know, of, of which, whose goal did we want to work on first, you know, and it really wasn't a hard decision because Nikolai is a very driven person. He got into the SCA going, 
uh, heavy fighting is amazing and I want to see how far this goes. Whereas I was, especially in the beginning, flitting around a lot going, I want to do this and I want to try this and I want to try this. So it really wasn't a hard decision for us to focus on that. And yeah, it definitely changed things, you know, having, you know, watching him go through that process of becoming a peer and now being a peer, you know, and, you know, being in a situation where one of us is a peer and one of us isn't, you know, there, it does change that dynamic a little bit. Um, but I don't think in, in, in any way, a bad sort of way. Um, I, first, I want to say, I don't think that pushing for a peerage is a bad phrase to use or a bad way of thinking of it. Oh, good. Some, some people do. So, you know, you try to like, you know, I, I, I talked to a lot of people about that because, you know, as a driven person and, you know, sometimes you get told, you can't say you want to be a peer, right? And I talked to a lot of people and I finally got good advice of it's okay to want to be a peer. It's not okay to have your identity wrapped around wanting to be a peer, you know? So that helped me a lot with phrasing things better and finding a better place to be. Yes, of course I want to be a peer one day. That's an amazing goal and peers are worthy people and you can only hope to be, you know, seen as worthy one day. So Yes, I'd love to be a peer one day, but it's not, it's definitely not that driving all in code. I deserve to be a peer, right? Right. I mean, why wouldn't you, um, especially being a competitive person, want to seek excellence in what you're right? doing? Exactly. So it definitely helped to find better ways to phrase it and better ways, you know, both, both to talk to other people, but also to make sure that my relationship with that journey was a healthy one as well. And that's, I think, totally key. Um, I, I've seen people destroy themselves. Oh yeah. Over that, over not having a healthy relationship with that journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I have at times had an unhealthy relationship with that journey and it makes things really, really not fun. No, it does. You know, I, I went through a really bad time for a while there having a, a, an unhealthy relationship with a desire for a period, you know, and it started to be kind of all consuming and taking away from my enjoyment. But then I found what really was when it took away from my enjoyment of other people's progress and other people's success. You know, I don't ever want to be jealous of someone's success, you know? And the first time I started feeling a little bit like, mm, I was like, well, no, 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 because, you know, worthy people are elevated. So, you, you know, it, it, was not healthy when I started kind of grumbling to myself about that. I was like, okay, we need to reevaluate this, you know? And then of course life got a lot better and enjoyment of society became a lot better when it stopped focusing on this thing and just started enjoying. Yeah. And, and I think, um, well, I can't really say all, but most people that I know that are peers have gone through a little bit of that. Um, it's hard not to look at somebody that you consider your equal um, getting recognized and wonder, like, why them and not me? Yeah. I mean, well, and yeah. And, you know, for me, it was when I, I started seeing people who I considered my cohort, you know, my, my, my peers, lowercase peers, as I saw them getting closer, I, I made the conscious decision. I want to have a good relationship with my journey because I want to celebrate the hell out of my friends getting that accolade. And so long before it ever happened, I did my reevaluation. So now as I'm seeing my cohort become getting recognized, it is just joyful. You know, it's not, there's no jealousy. There's no pouting. It's I'm just ecstatic for them. I, I think that's the best the very, very best way to look at it. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of times, it's just a timing thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that councils work, um, it takes a council sometimes a year to have a candidate go through the, they're ready to them. And, you know, with a pandemic, <laughs> All the rules are gone. <laughs> oh, I know. You know, that that's just it, right? Yeah. You, you never know. And and you never know. And, and you can't know wh why certain things are happening, you know? And it's what I have learned talking to people. It's rarely, it's funny to say, but it's rarely about you, you know? And so I stopped 
worrying about the destination and started focusing on the journey. And I found that in all things, in scribal, in heavy, in service, that it just became so much more fun, you know, and, you know, I, I'm not worried about, you know, I'm not worried about it and I haven't been for a long time and my gosh, you know, and when I, but it helps me when I see somebody else starting to go through that to be able to empathize, like you said, I think most people do. I think it's part of our human condition and part of being in a group like this. So it's easier now to recognize it in other people and help them learn from the hard parts of the journey that we've experienced. Yeah, and, and one of the things that sort of helps is to realize that the journey never goes away. Um, you know, you get recognized and it's still, you're still on the journey. Like there's no end. No, like the, yeah, right. The symbol doesn't change how really like who you are or whether people respect you or not. It's all about who you are and whether you're finding joy in, in your in your process and your journey and what you're doing. And if you're um, building community and, and helping people on their journey, which is something that you you do phenomenally. Thank um, you. you. And you do it in the fight community too. I know that we talked a little bit about um, still trying to nurture the fight community during the pandemic and how hard that is. Yeah. So I just, I am in awe of how um, well you nurture community. Oh, it's thank just you. amazing. And, and I think I, one of the pieces of advice is that peers often give people is to follow your passion and to do what you love. And I think that, that what is under that statement is what we just talked about. Yeah. It's enjoying the journey. It's, it's not getting caught up in the end part and just really focusing on the here and now. And well, yeah, because there's so much, you know, when you think about the journey, there's so much good scenery that you don't want to miss. You know, there's so many, so many cool things that you'll experience along the way that could get lost if you're so focused on that end goal. I kind of want to talk about um, your sense of whimsy and your fun too. Okay. Yeah. Um, because here we are talking and you're wearing this, this cool uh, um, MLP um, headband. And I know you have a thing for MLPs because I painted a shield for you once. For yep. Yep. I have that shield. Yep. So let's talk about how you keep your sense of fun and whimsy um, in the game. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, being a newer member to the society, right? Like we just celebrated for us 10 years. So I know for a lot of people, that's still fairly young. You know, you, you grow up on these stories or you're introduced about the party in Berkeley, right? And it's, to me, it's remembering that we are, you know, the Society for Creative Anachronism, right? We're not a living history group. So it can be a balance. You don't want to go so far to the other side that we're, you know, we're all cosplaying and, and being, you know, too silly, but it is remembering that it's, it's, we're here to have fun. You know, I was tearing the house apart, trying to find my circlet for this and I couldn't find it. We ran out of time. So here we go. You know, it's, it's, it's just having some fun, you know, finding things like, you know, funny marginalia that you kind of claim as your own and suddenly everyone's drawing that for you. You know, it's, it's just remembering to have a little fun, you know, take the serious thing serious because this is, you know, for a lot of us, this is our family, right? This is, this is our, our life in a very real way, but it is still a game. It's a, it's a real game. But it, it's not, you know, it's not going to be fun if we forget to have some jokes and yeah, maybe wear a unicorn headdress because you can't find your circlet or have a My Little Pony shield because that's fun, you know, and, you know, like a great example recently is that, you know, being that I do like war fighting, you know, for fun um, and my night was very much like I'm not, I'm not a war fighter. I'm like, but you're going to war fight with me. Right. And so he, he acquiesced and he made himself a big, scary rawhide wrapped glaive. And he said to me, I want you to write despair on this. And I'm like, absolutely. And then I covered the entire thing with teeny tiny kittens. So in bold Gothic letters, it says despair. And there's, I think 150 teeny tiny kittens drawn all over it. Right. So you, you got to have some whimsy. You got to have some fun 
with it. And I think that's the thing that keeps people from getting too caught up, you know, on, because there is, there, you know, there's, there is drama, there's stuff at stake, you know, we have reputations, we have goals. This is, a, you know, this is an organization that, you know, requires time and money. So there is an investment, but by keeping whimsy, by keeping fun, it keeps our eyes on the reason we do this. You know, it, it keeps it from being just, it, it keeps it a hobby and not a job, you know? So that's, I think one of those things that I like to have is that reminder. And that's why you always see Nikolai and I kick boots, you know, when, when we salute each other for, for fights and stuff like that is because that sort of thing, it, it does, it keeps it fun, you know, and it keeps people engaged. It has ways for them to, to interact even, you know, if you're like, yep, so-and-so likes blue bunnies, suddenly people are looking for blue bunnies, right? And it keeps people engaged. It keeps people working for stuff. Very cool. I, I have to say that I have completely lost my whimsy along the way. And um, people like you that, that have not and that continue to um, keep that fresh are like lights in the dark a lot of the times for me. So I really, really appreciate that. So thank you. Of course, of course. <laughs> well, we'll find your whimsy. It, you may just show, you know, you may find a hidden dick bird in your tent one day, but you'll find some whimsy. I don't know. I'll I'll find it for you. You've been doing quite a bit of whimsical things for other people during the pandemic. You just haven't quite shown the light on yourself. That's true. I did make my, my husband has some penis fish on his, yes. on his new fighting outfit. So that's amazing. <laughs> yes. See, see, got it. But I, I feel like it's a place that I could use some work. So I appreciate that. And it's, it's uh, very inspiring to me to see uh, you embrace that. It's awesome. So I know that you are painting a lot of shields. Can you tell yes. me how you got into that? And if somebody is interested in uh, having yeah. you, know how they can get in contact with you? Yeah, so uh, my big shield project that started this all was, again, actually for my night, um, who was like, uh, you know, I, I had been painting Nikolai shields and my shield, but um, my knight asked me to paint a shield for him. And he said, I want you to paint a shield that represents your thoughts about me. He's like, because we can use this as a lesson. We can let, don't show me ahead of time. Don't tell me what you're doing. Just paint something that represents our relationship or how you see me and whatnot. And, you know, I, I took it to heart and I created this, this shield that I made for him. Um, and let's see, give me just one second here. I was going to try to pull it up. I'm like, I'm going to go to her persona page. Yeah, I can, it's, you can find it over there. Um, so yeah. Um, so I created that for him. Uh, let me know if you need to. I'm trying to find it. I've got everyone enabled for screen sharing. So whoever finds it first can share it. It's a race. <laughs> Go. Yeah, the, the, the problem is I have all the Inktober things. There we go. All right. I got it. Here we go. All right. So, all right. Share screen, screen one. Sure. Here we go. Um, Oh, wow. So that's what I came up with. Um, and I it, like that you have the drinking horns on there because. Uh, yeah, um, his heraldry has the axes and the drinking horns. Um, and when I had asked him a long time ago what the, the horns represented, and they, he said that it represented um, Heimdall, um, which is why there's actually also the rainbow behind the horns, but also because as, as a queer person, you know, his support of me, that also those, those rainbows there represent the fact that he's been so understanding and he's worked with me on my journey and, you know, having, um, you know, a gender minority squire, you know, and, and his work with me. So that's what that represented. Um, the, the, the gold on that shield is real gold leaf. Um, so, so I, I created the shield for him, um, you know, and that's kind of where, that's where it started. Um, 
you know, and it, it, it was, it was a fun, challenging, emotional thing to create. Um, and I had, I, I had my only condition was I got to be the first one to hit it. So, uh, sure enough, sure enough, he came up, he came up for my first tournament as a squire and, uh, we opened up with, uh, me whacking the shield a few times. So I christened it. Nice. Um, and yeah, so that, that's where that started. Um, and, uh, from there, yeah, I just, uh, do you have more photos of your work that you can share? Um, I have, let's see. Yes, probably one other. And then I've got actually one in progress right now I can show. Um, let's see. I failed to even, that wasn't even on my radar. So <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You know what? It's all good. Let's see if I can find the other one real quick here. Um, if, if you guys are interested in her shields, if you look at our at on their shields, sorry, um, okay. the progress pictures on their persona page are amazing. Yeah, that one's kind of a fun one because it shows a little bit of everything. Um, I did. Oh gosh, let's see. There you look for a second here. Oh, so unprepared. Uh, I did a shield for Andrus Trumark, which came out really nice as well. Um, and that was a fun one because he showed me a little sketch of a Lithuanian dragon that was sketched onto a rock. Um, and ah, here we go. Uh, so, all right, it's a not a great picture, but ooh, let's get, zoom back up here real quick. That's the right button. Here we go. Shield share screen again this guy right here. Sure. There we go. Um, so that's Andrus's shield as well. Um, so yeah, he gave me a little Lithuanian dragon to create. And so I made it look less like a stick figure and more like a critter. Uh, so that's, that's when I'm working or I finished. Um, and yeah, so that's where I kind of got into it. And then, yeah. And now, um, as a freelance artist, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, I'll show you guys right now because I think the commissioner is probably not watching and if it is, if he is, then he gets a little, but my current shield that I'm working on right now is this right here. And oh, wow. the reason it, let's see if I can get in here, the reason it looks is I'm actually turning it into a oh, mosaic. Wow. wow. So this whole thing will be a mosaic when it's done. Wow. So I'm trying to figure out who that's for with the lions and the ermine. But. <laughs> I'll tell you after the uh okay. I'll tell you afterwards who it's for. Um but yeah, and so I've got a couple shields. Yeah, so that's a that's a thing. So if someone's interested in having a pretty shield painted, uh I've got some spots in my queue and I'm loving it. It is so much fun to do. Um and yeah, I just got into it because another cool way to do art and it's a neat way to have it out there and seen and I love the shields get used it doesn't bother me to see them getting hit you know it's just so awesome to see them out there it's one of the coolest things about on tier fighting culture right now is how many people are really using um, practical disposable art um, on their shields it makes such a huge difference I love um, it yeah it's it's just amazing and and you're doing such amazing work well, and that, that's, thank you. That's high praise. You do amazing stuff as well. So you're definitely one of my big inspirations uh, for when I'm working on them. So right at you. Awesome. <laughs> uh, did, have we, God, I'm so tired. I'm sorry. Um, is there something that you wanted to talk about that we haven't covered tonight? Gosh, I don't know. We've kind of been all over the place. Uh, I, you know, I, it's, I just love doing this. You know, I love all the aspects of it. You know, I, I love, I just love the SCA, you know, it's, it's really family for me, you know, in a lot of real ways, some really realistic ways, you know, um, and it's, it's an amazing thing. And right now it's, it's so cool to be able to be working on things like shields as a job, you know, and, I'm loving being a squire right now. Like what a fun, fun path to be on. Um, you know, is it's just, 
it's just a hoot, you know, it's, it's, it's so enjoyable. Um, I love all the people that I get to meet with and talk and this, this has been fantastic. Hey, so I want you to know that every time you guys, um, fight in a teary coronet, I'm always rooting for you. Oh, um, I would love to see you reign. Um, is that something that you two have as a goal? Yes. Yeah. I would say it is something that we would love to do. You know, I think that reigning is kind of the ultimate service, you know, and I would love to be able to give to the principality and, and maybe to the kingdom one day to, to give of, to them, you know, the great service that you can do as a royal, you know, and I think that that would be just an amazing experience, you know, I know it's a lot of work, I've helped on a lot of reigns, I've watched a lot of friends go through that, um, but yeah, definitely, you know, and it's something, it is a goal for me, you know, I, you know, I have my little goals, like, you know, I, I, I want to be a good squire, right, and one day I'd like to be worthy of a, a sable gauntlet, and of course one day, who, who, you know, you don't put a red belt on not hoping one day to be worthy of a white one, you know, and to that end, I don't think that there's, uh, you know, I think most of us um, female body fighters hope one day, you know, A, hope one day, yeah, to have the white belt, but also hope one day to, you know, do the great deed by our own hand, you know, so that's, it feels like hubris to ever have it as a goal, but I couldn't settle for less, you know, it's, and it's okay. If I never make it, that's okay, but I'm not going to stop trying. I don't, I don't think it's hubris at all. I think that that is what um, keeps people driven. And I think without drive, um, you know, you don't land where you want to be. Yeah. And, and I, I was going to say that that all sounds very familiar to me. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Right? <laughs> awesome so how are you um maintaining your square night relationship during the pandemic um so every week we do peer beer um so every single week get on you know video chat have a you know we have a drink and we talk about uh, fighting and what's going on, you know, and even if it's not fighting, you know, one of the things that Einar and I are doing is a little book club. So we're reading books together, um, you know, and discussing them. So, and they're all over the place. So, you know, that's been a big part of it. Um, it's tough being up here in Bellingham and with having him down in the Portland area, you know, with the pandemic, it's, it would be challenging enough to get, you know, to get down and see each other outside of a pandemic, but we'd have events, right? And that's kind of a middle ground. So it's a lot of taping pell work or taping fight practice and going over it, you know? So on Sundays when our fight practices, I film it and by Tuesday he's watched it and we're discussing it, you know? So that's the thing we do. Um, like I said, the book club's been a really big part of it as well. Um, and then, you know, just making sure that we're constantly chatting and then even little things, you know, like, hey, I found this cool tank top and I'm sending it to you, you know, those little things, they continue to keep that bond together, you know. Um, it's very important for our relationship that I make sure that I send him. Uh oh, no. Oh, there she is, she's back. Oh, sorry. It, you, you, you blacked out right at, um... It's very important for our relationship that I send him. Oh, that's a great place to pause. Um, <laughs> pictures, pictures of my kitty cats. So, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. You have a lot of cats, don't you? I have four. Yeah, I got four kitty cats. That's not that so, many. Not no. that many, but it's 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 enough. So, so yeah, you know, so we we you know stuff like that. You know, we. Um. A I love that you guys are doing the book club. I think that's amazing. Yeah, yeah that's been that's been excellent. Do you have um, some titles that you would be willing to share, like maybe the last couple ones that you've done? Yeah, you know, actually, so we started actually with the Armored Rose, um, and that was kind of where I knew that this relationship was going to be really great because we, he's, you know, 
like, okay, let's read this book. And it wasn't, let's read this book because it's the Bible. It's let's read this book. Tell me what's, and, and his thing was, tell me what your thoughts are. What of this rings true? What of this doesn't ring true? Um, and we had, it was really great because we kind of, having that as our first book gave us language to talk, you know, and it gave us kind of a, a vocabulary to work with in a way, you know, so we could talk about it. And then actually from there, um, I, I liked some of the stuff of the book. So I reached out and uh, reached out to her grace, Lena, and we became friends with her. And so my night and her and I chat sometimes, you know, on video chat. So that was a great start. Um, we have read um, the book we're currently reading right now is The Unfettered Mind. That's a um, yeah um and then the most most recent one before that was uh rules for a night by ethan hawk love that that was a great book that was like a, a book written for the sca nights right it's not particularly historical but it is a great one um every time i bring that book up people laugh at me because of ethan hawk and i'm like i know I was, and then laugh at me you know what i yes see and for me that book I keep coming back to because there's something in it, right? And like when we lost Sir Thorpe, I went to the sec, you know, the the chapter on death in there, you know, and it helped. Yeah, though we we talk about that book has been one that we've come back to over and over again. Um, so so that's one of those books that we've been reading. Um, and then and then you know some of them get a little bit fun. Um, I've got a book on um, power skating, footwork for power skaters. So we've got that book. Um, and um, we've also got the uh, Tao of Pooh and the Tay of Piglet. So we're working on that. You know, so it's a little bit all over the place. Um, and then I just picked up uh, Fear is the Mind Killer. So too. Yeah, so we're just kind of all over the place, you know, stuff about mental discipline, stuff about power generation, stuff about how to be a good knight, you know. Um, a Knight's Own Book of Chivalry is another one that I just picked up. So yeah, we've got just all over the place, you know, and we just use that as a way to communicate and a way to what, you know, his experiences as both being a knight and then, you know, being Earl Marshall and these things that he's done, he can show his experience in that. And then mine as kind of the bright eyed, new squire you know we we use these books as one of those ways to communicate those differences of our paths i really love that uh, that you're doing that and that that in a way you're utilizing this pandemic to sort of uh lay a really good solid foundation both for your relationship and for your um kind of identity as as a future knight um, and i'm sure i'm sure it's helping build his identity too and um, you don't talk about things like that without changing a little bit so yeah oh no i think i think that we've both seen growth um and uh maturation as people from it you know you, you i don't think like you said i don't think you can have this kind of relationship without some growth and change as people yeah super cool well, thank you for sharing that that's uh, yeah. yeah i love that i i, I tried to um do video like club with my squires and everybody's so busy that I am I have to admit that we haven't been as good as you. <laughs> so. I I have not been as good with my apprentices either because when one of us is excited and motivated, the other one's not and it just it just hasn't. So but you have inspired me to get re Yeah, you know <laughs> it it you know we just we just kind of follow the rules like, you know, um I like to play Dungeons and Dragons in real life. And the rule of the game is always, if you all say you want to play a game, you're never going to have a game. But when you put a date down, people will show up. And so that really became the thing is if we tried to figure out a time we'd all be available, we'd never get there. But me and my squire brother and my knight on Tuesdays, 6.30, we're chatting, you know, unless you've got a damn good excuse. And then you're going to get some grief, you know, and it, it's just, it, and that sort of routineness is also it's so easy to feel unfettered in, in the pandemic, right? And knowing that every Tuesday I got to be here and I got to get my whiskey in one hand and a conversation in the other, you know, it's definitely helped keep things grounded. I would say this, that we have 
done that for each other with these interviews for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. This has been really great. Awesome. Good. Thank you so much. This is this has been so much fun. So, so can I ask you one more question before we sign off? Um, you can ask me as many questions as you want. If you had, um, like if somebody asked you for advice on how to build community during the pandemic, um, what would be like the one thing that you would want to convey? I would say that if you're working on building community that right now, whether it's an online sort of community or it's a in-person community, what we all need is, is a two-sided thing. We need stability and good vibes. So show up, you know, if you say on Tuesdays, you're going to do a thing, maybe it's just one of you, maybe one person shows up, you know, when I was doing online scribble, sometimes I only had two people tuning in while I was doing it, but you know what, for those two people, okay, they get your attention, have a good try to, you know, as best you can try to have a good attitude and be there, you know, because that's what's going to build community. And that's what's going to keep things going, you know, is Try to have a smile even when things suck, you know, try to find the good thing or just be like, yeah, you know, it's really rough today, but we're going to paint this thing or, hey, we're going to work on these shots on the Pell or whatever, you know, or, you know, a great thing that we've been doing for communities, we have a very small pod of people and we don't have, we know we don't have a hugely active group up in Thornwold. So since it's a small group of people and at least where we are, we're all vaccinated, weather permitting, we have dinner afterwards, you know, we fire up the grill. And so every week after fight practice, you get up the grill, you chat, you know, those are the things that build your community. When I do my online scribble, okay, we're going to do this thing. I'm going to have that dialogue, that conversation. I think that that stability, that knowing that you can count on something, things like the sisters interview has been a great thing because it's a touch base, right? You can, you know, something's going to happen. You're going to go, you know, it's going to be there. And I think that that's, probably the most important thing. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, this really has been um, quite um, heartwarming, I guess is the right word. I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is exactly what I needed. I've been struggling and this is exactly what I needed tonight. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You two are amazing. And I'm absolutely blown away that you asked me to talk. Um, this has been, because I, I really admire both of you. Um, you guys have been one of those touchstones during the pandemic. So I know it's kind of sucked, but don't count yourselves out. You've been very important to a lot of people, you know, and your interviews and the things that you've done have helped people have some normalcy. Um, and, and the fact that you've reached out to everybody, you're talking to Dukes, you're talking to Laurels, but you're also talking to people like me that, that aren't peers. And that's been important. So you guys have been doing a huge service. So from me and from a lot of people, I'm sure I say thank you. I, I just want to like you, you you sort of said like people like me who aren't peers, I, you are a dynamo, like you do it all. So um, I love that we've been able to um, actually, and I use the word actually, I hate that, but find people um, that maybe don't have the same kind of name fame um, that are dynamos and, and be able to talk to them. So I, I, I love it. You know, an organization like this, it takes peers, but it takes non-peers as well, you know, and it's, I'm certainly, I'm not feeling down on myself. Oh, I'm not a peer. It's, I want to see everyone's story, right? Like everybody's got a cool story. So I love the fact that you two have taken the opportunity to tell all the stories. And I think that that's been so important because yeah, sure. I'd love to hear about Duke so-and-so and how they got started, but I also like to hear about the people who are on my path, you know, because they're they're just as valid and they've got just as interesting a story, right? And the fact that you two have taken that time to do that has been rad. So Thanks. we were a little late to that party, but uh, we're definitely focused on that now. Um, so thank you for the reinforcement of of that as a good path. Um, you guys are amazing. We are going to be departing from yeah. that path for the next month. We're going to be interviewing um a handful of the barons and baronesses the landed barons and baronesses of Ontario. um oh, those that's awesome yeah. those are some hard-working selfless people they, awesome they, awesome for for me they they really have been the unsung heroes during the pandemic they've really been um building community and keeping the sda going um in the face of um really not a lot going on on a kingdom level yeah so, um 
I'm really excited to talk to some of them that have been putting in so much work um, and see, you know, and 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 laid the foundation um, and and sort of the 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 groundwork for and the rules for how everybody's doing it throughout the kingdom. Um, oh so yeah, that will be next month, and we're starting with um, one of the uh, local baronies to me, um, uh, Scamp and uh, sorry Felix and Vivian from Three Mountains. <laughs> I'm glad you messed up because I'm like I'm gonna mess it up. I'm gonna <laughs> Uh, and I'm super excited to talk to them. I find them both to be incredibly um, inspiring people. Um, and so I, I'm really excited to have them kick it off. Um, we There are 17 baronies in Ontario, and I do want to make sure that we put it out there that we do, um, we want to give everyone who wants the opportunity for a, an interview with us that opportunity. Uh, we don't personally know all 17 baronial heads, so uh, we are would be thrilled to have people contact us um, after we're doing four or five, one, two, five for September. And then we'll kind of alternate uh, until we get through them all um, and, and continue to do uh, interviews with other folks as well. <laughs> so we're gonna start with Three Mountains and then we'll do Glamere and Terra Pomeria and Madrona. And then uh, I think take a little break in October and do a couple individuals and we'll go back to Baron and Baronesses. So. Madrona and then Lionsgate. Oh, I forgot Lionsgate. Sorry. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. yeah. So um, join us for those. I think they're going to be really, really cool. Um, different perspective and really the, the people that um, have really been putting in the work and, and thinking creatively about how to, how to keep us all going. Yep. So thanks everyone for watching and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.